good day dear students we have started the lesson by chinua achebe and the interesting thing is he is giving a speech and it is about the british protected person so we have not yet reached that stage of explaining explaining who that british protected person is and how come that uh, term is there so in this class you will learn more about the africans or the tribe to which chinua achebe belonged and that is the igbo tribe so let's see what he has to say about his own tribal life achebe gives his readers a sketch of igbo people and they belong to the place called ogidi and so you here you find that he is trying to explain the nature of his tribe to the world he uses the language of the colonizers and that is english in order to give this explanation this is exactly the reason why you have a lesson here in english because even if you say something against colonialism we can't just ignore the good points or whatever that we gained by colonialism hb is also not trying to speak against those things that were uh, gained by the colonized one is the language that is english because of that he was able to speak and uh, continue to inspire other people and at the same time give the world a sketch of his own people that is the igbo people so here he tells us that uh, the judgment of ogidi does not go against one side that is the igbo people will never take sides with only one person they will examine everything and only then they will decide on the verdict so the judgment is really balanced they are also social and they are also social managers and in a way this is very true because you will find that they do not want uh, to be legal draftsmen because whenever they make a judgment they do not go as per the rules or regulations but according to the social norms because it is the uh, tribe and the tribal people and they have a better knowledge of the tribal people than any rule or laws that were imposed on them and he again tells us that uh, their life is not a neat table top but a messy workshop a neat table top in the sense that uh, everything is in its place and a place for everything and you can't just move one thing from the other or one place to the other it is that very strict but their life is like a messy workshop where you have a lot of things scattered around but the person who is there in the workshop knows where each uh, uh work material is and so he will be able to work quite well in from that messy workshop and uh, after doing the work maybe he will be able to clear the whole thing but working is not just possible with a neat table top appearance in the same way uh, the igbo people uh, can work out from the mess and come out with a perfect solution he regards them as wise people and uh foolish ones and there will be of course being a tribe you will find uh, all types of people wise people as well as foolish ones but nobody is scandalized by that because they have the tolerance towards the foolish ones it is not that the they they, they are wise people but they can have the tolerance or the large heartedness to accept the foolish ones too so in a way he 
uh, glorifies the Igbo people. Or in a way, he states that this is how it is. Why does he do that? That's again a question for us. Because he had come across another culture, that of the missionaries and of the English people. And from where he is standing, he can see both sides, that of his own people, Igbo people, and the people that he had acquired by language, and that is the English people and their culture. This is why he is trying to put before us the uh, nature and the culture of the Igbo people. So um, he continues about the Igbo people and he says that they are not starry-eyed about the world. Uh, to the Igbo, there is a total reality about the world. And they are not always uh, optimistic about the world in the sense that world is, of course, a good place, but they don't have only stars about the world because they knew that the world is uh, a, a mixture of everything, good and bad, gray and everything. So they are very realistic about the world. And at the same time, you find that the women are also there and they have their own uh, attitude. So uh, the attitude of the woman is, uh, a woman is, uh, she is supposed to say that she doesn't insist that she is loved by her husband as long as he puts out yams for lunch every afternoon. And you may start uh, laughing at this saying when a woman says that. But the thing is that uh, in a country like Africa, yams are uh, a delicious variety. But at the same time, it is something that will quench the hunger. As long as her husband has something earned for the table, dining table, or for lunch every afternoon, then she is uh, loved by her husband. This is the attitude of the woman. At the same time, you will find that um, uh, the marriage is indeed tough. And uh, why is it tough? Because uh, it is uh, by the, about that people. And you will find that it is bigger than any man or woman, says uh, Achebe. So um, Igbo is not asking you to meet uh, them, uh, meet it head on with a placard, nor do you uh, go around it or run away from it. But you will have to find a way to cope. And do you think that it is cowardice? No, it's not. Because you don't know the Igbo tribe. They are indeed tough. So you find that Igbo will ask you to find a way to cope rather than run away from that. So this is their attitude. You can't call that as cowardice. There is no need to fight and wage a war against and win. It is not that. Marriage is about two people and uh, about the uh, families. But uh, in a way, the Igbo people have the uh, resources to and even the wisdom to go around it and make it work. So that is a point in favor of the Igbo people. Again, you find that uh, he says colonial rule was stronger than any marriage because the colonial rule came over to Africa, especially to Nigeria, to Achebe's place, and it stayed for a long, long time. The Igbo people fought against these oppressors and they lost. And even then, they did not uh, accept defeat. They were not disheartened. They knew that they did whatever they could uh, to stop that, but they lost the uh, fight and they are not unhappy about it, nor are they bitter about it. They accept that they are lost. And in the novel, Things Fall Apart, he speaks about the way this fight went on and how they lost and uh, again about Christianity, especially conversion to Christianity. It was not uh, easy, neither in history nor in fiction, 
because you find that uh, the history of Nigeria starts quite early. That is from uh, 1892 because it came to his town, Ugidi, in the year 1892. So uh, you find here that the first missionaries came to uh, River Niger in uh, 1857 and finally reached his town only in 1892. The distance from Onitsha to Ogidi is only 7 miles and it took them 35 long years to reach there. So uh, the, every inch of the way the Igbo fought them. So it is, even though Igbo people lost it, it took Christianity to reach their shores 35 years. And so he says that the Igbo people are really tough and uh, losing is not just something that is uh, degrading. In a way, it is again a success story. So here you read about the history of Christianity in Nigeria in these paragraphs, paragraphs uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, all these will give you that it is uh, uh, not an easy matter, that uh, the Christianity progressed only um, uh, within 35 years and that to uh, an area of 7 miles. They were able to cover only that area. And it was not widespread and it was not easy for the missionaries also. And so this shows that the Igbo uh, people were quite persistent. And even though they tried to stop the uh, colonization coming over and also Christianity coming over, finally they have to give in. So it was neither give nor take that kind of attitude they had with Christianity and also the oppression. Then you will find here that um, the, his discourse is on um, not to give a discourse on colonialism because um, Tinu Achebe is actually speaking about uh, more about colonialism even without being uh, uh, more uh, insistent about it because the way he speaks is about the way he lived in Africa under the colonial rule and what happened to him from his younger days and also the things that were happening all around him. So he is not trying to take sides either with the colonizers nor with his own people. So whatever is good about colonial rule, he accepts and uh, whatever that is not acceptable, he speaks out. So his main objection to the colonial rule, he lists out in this manner. And that is, it is a gross crime to impose oneself on the other and make out that the victim is in need of protection. This is exactly the rule that is made by the colonizers because they think that they are indeed supermen and uh, all the others are savages and uh, the, the, uh, the other countries need their protection. Protection from what? That is again a question. So they try to tell them that uh, they are there to protect them. This is how they come. And so you can think of the title of this lesson, a British protected person or a British protected child. That is the title of this uh, lesson. So the British came over to Africa and they started giving protection. And so uh, Achebe is again, a uh, British protected child. All the Africans are so. And why do they need protection? From whom do they need protecting? All these are questions for which the colonizer just do not have any answer. And Achebe uh, says that it is a gross crime to impose oneself on the other and also make out, you can impose on them and maybe they are generous enough to give you their hospitality. But to make out that this victim is in need of protection. These uh, colonizers are someone who has come over to protect them. 
that kind of attitude is that which he is uh, objecting. The second reason is that all of Europe collaborated in creating the Africa which was set out to be delivered to the colonizer. That is the whole of Europe. Uh, you will find that colonizing came uh, from almost all the uh, countries of Europe. And you have English, Belgium, uh, England, Belgium, Denmark, Portugal, France, all these uh, people coming over and even Germans also coming over and uh, making colonies or creating colonies in uh, almost all the other continents, including Asia and Africa and the near nearing uh, continents. So here you find that uh, uh, they collaborated, all these European nations collaborated in creating the Africa, which is to be delivered to the colonizers. Like, for example, the novel Heart of Darkness. I've mentioned this earlier um, about colonization. And uh, Heart of Darkness is uh, by a man called, a novelist called Joseph Conrad. And he speaks of colonization and the search of uh, search for uh, Kurtz, a man who was already in Africa and who is uh, looting Africa in a manner. But in a way, you find that it is written from the viewpoint of the colonizer, not from the Africans, uh, which means that a lot of Africans feature in the novel Heart of Darkness, but no, they speak also, but their speech is not understood or it is just remarked as a mere gabbling. And uh, this is how they regard the uh, spoken language of the African continent. So they were not given any sense of representation in these novels. But it is considered to be a novel against colonization. Even then, it is from the viewpoint of a white man and never ever from the viewpoint of an African. So the whole of Europe, in a way, uh, plotted against uh, in so many ways, including language and literature. And this is exactly what made colonizing quite easy. And they... Uh, by colonizing, it is it does not mean that they were converted to Christianity alone. Africa has got a lot of riches to deliver, including the mines and, of course, the ivory from Africa. All these were looted and the people never objected to it because their concern was not about these people and uh, they have their own tribe. And they existed as such. They welcomed these people because they, their attitude is to welcome these people or strangers. And this is why there is no one to speak from the part of Africa. So when King Leopold of Belgium came over and established a colony, they were the Africans were not opposing it in any manner because uh, the king insisted that Africans needed someone to govern them as if they do not know how to govern themselves. How did they exist all these days? Did they exist without the um, with the help of King Leopold all these days? No, definitely not. They have their own rules and their own uh, manners, their own culture. And that was quite okay for them. But these people, the colonizers, really found that they have a lot of wealth which they took from their country, from Africa, and uh, took it to their own country and made Europe a very rich continent. Because all the nations, almost all the nations of Europe had colonies in Africa and Asia, and they were amassing wealth as a result of that. Because these colonies were a source of uh, uh, wealth for them. And the colonized, uh, the colonies uh, were indeed, the colonized uh, were quite unable to fight such a strong force. So in a way, it is actually looting. And uh, this is exactly what happened to colonization. So 
Hachabe says that he is not speaking about colonialism, but he speaks of all these things which are to be said about Africa and also the place of the people in the place of the colonizer in Africa. And Belgium, or the king from Belgium is only just one example. There are a lot of other countries having their colonies in Africa. Again, he says that the victim, the colonized, is disposes and turns his powerlessness to laughter and thereby lift himself out of desolation and despair. So how does the Igbo uh, react to this colonization? The, uh, the Igbo people are indeed people who do not want pity. So you find that they are totally dispossessed of their land and they were totally, uh, uh, dis uh, this is indeed uh, uh, that which makes them totally powerless. And this powerlessness should actually make a person weak. Instead of which the Igbo turned this powerlessness to laughter and thereby lifted himself out of desolation and despair. Very few tribal people will ever do that. The Igbo has got a culture to uh, take out the good out of, the, out of a worse situation. And they also have the nature in them to turn everything to the, a better use and to make the best of a worse situation. The best of a worse situation. So in a way they are better managers than anyone is and they also have a sense of humor and it is uh, at the most best working when they are totally powerless and they are laughing at their powerlessness. Who will ever find a chance to do that? And nowadays we ne will never find it in our, uh, our own self to laugh at a situation where you fail and there is only despair and we find it very difficult to get up from that despair and to regard all this situation with the laughter and um, uh, and turn it to a better prospect it is something only the Igbo can really do. So here he says that the victim or the colonized is totally disposes and turns his powerlessness to laughter and by doing so, he is lifting himself out of the desolation and despair of being a victim or being a colonized person. It is not something that you really enjoy because these white people just come over and uh, they just uh, tell them that uh, you are under their protection. You did not ask, uh, ask them to protect you. You did not ask them to come over to the, your country and uh, take over all that is yours and then tell you that they will give you uh, their protection. And it is utter nonsense also. But even then, in, uh, in the face of such powerlessness, the Igbo people really have it in their nature to laugh at, a, at that situation and create a, a world of uh, happiness or even a better prospect rather than go much deeper out, out of uh, uh, deeper into desolation and despair. This is in a way a positive attitude of the Igbo culture. And Achebe has to speak about this because the whole world has no idea about the Africans. And um, Achebe is not speaking all about Africa, but more particularly about the uh, Igbo people because he knows them and he had been part of that tribe. So whatever he knows, he could uh, tell the world because he now has the command of English. And that language is helping him to communicate uh, his or communicate his culture to the world culture, and they are also accepting this because till then the that side or uh, no one spoke from Africa, and everybody spoke about Africa, 
like for example uh, joseph conrad and a lot of other people wrote about africa but it is a white man's attitude but the persons from africa started speaking and you will find a number of uh, such persons uh, quite well equipped to speak about africa with the help of the language english because their own language is limited to their own tribe and they will not be understood by the world if they speak only in their tribal language this is why english comes as quite useful in spite of his protest against colonialism he is not totally blind against the plus points of colonialization and this is why he says that it has its own good points and bad points and this is why he had chosen the middle way and from the earlier instance itself he says that he would like to take the middle path and not the uh, extremes for or against the middle path is always a safer path and uh, there is a lot of things to be uh, you have already heard that in the first class about the middle path the, uh, how advantageous it is there is a past which you can depend on fall back on there is also a future you can look up to this is why you when you choose the middle the present then naturally you are in a, a, be a better situation than anything else so this is why he speaks about this uh, his attitude and how the igbo people were uh, trying to save themselves and also their tribe by accepting the goodness of the colonization and at the same time reacting against the colonization the bad pa part of colonization even if they fail in their attempt they are quite happy that the fight was done and of course it is there will be uh, um, victory and lo uh, losses they are ready to accept that it is that attitude of the igbo people that is worth mentioning again uh, you find uh, chinua achebe's mother's experience with the uh, miss edith ashley warner which is really interesting because um, uh, she was uh, uh, that is miss warner was one of the missionary teachers and you don't find a person like that anymore because uh, being an uh, white uh, person miss edith uh, ashley warner need not have bothered to learn the language of the igbo but she did and she made the um, made the achebe's mother to listen to her and instead of correcting her she started laughing at which miss edith ashley started using the cane because as a teacher achebe's mother should have been strict with her and uh, uh, as a teacher in the sense teaching the language and that is one experience that the mother shared with achebe so here it is about the legacy of unspared rod that is if you don't use the rod then the child will not be uh, right in growing up and this is something that he learned quite early in his life then uh, he speaks about the wall poster and the wall poster means his father has got this habit of hanging uh, wall posters to inspire his children as a preacher he was uh, really into this wall posters and there is one poster which says speak true live pure right wrong follow the king and as a youngster who had just started learning english achebe had difficulty in understanding the uh, uh, one phrase that is right wrong speak true live pure right wrong right and wrong what is that right wrong comes together so he says that he had a problem with english noun and verbs so what exactly is right wrong in a way it means in you, know, you are to uh, correct the wrong that is done and right wrong is indeed uh, opposing but at the same time it is something very right also so uh, achebe's father's interest in posters uh, really helped him to learn about a lot of things 
there is the yearly almanac almanac is actually a calendar and to um, the wall posters stretch from calendars to a variety of pictures there is a picture of johnny walker born in 1920 which is an advertisement for scottish whisky whisky and you find that uh, this is again a poster that was there on the wall and uh, the children grew up seeing all this and now he can laugh about it because um uh, usually it is not uh, something that uh, you have uh, as a poster but his father was somehow rather attracted towards the way it is uh, printed or maybe the uh, poster as such maybe it is rare uh, in africa that's why he put it up in his uh, children's room then his education from these walls to the school in the village the village of ogidi and also to the now for festival could be uh, seen or it is described in detail in the following paragraphs that is uh, paragraph 25 26 27 28 29 that's in pages 118 19 and 20 so here you find that uh, his Uh, uh interest is uh, something that started from the wall posters as a young boy he used to look at this posters and started reading from there and uh, when he went to school also in the village of ogi he you uh, attended the school and there also he started uh, going to uh, the uh, learning uh, the uh, primary or the basics of his education so he was extremely happy about this wall posters because this is that was there in his memory and though he learned a lot in the schools the wall posters remained always in his mind and the variety it is not just the um, posters that inspired like the posters that you have nowadays with the inspiring quotes and the beautiful pictures these are things that came over to him and uh, he regarded um, achebe's father regarded it as precious and also posted them so that the children can see that and make what were they need about that in even though some of them are just advertisement posters especially for scottish whiskey and so in a way achebe says that um, these posters helped him uh, in his education i don't know how how far it helped but at the same time it is uh, interesting to note that as a young boy he remembered these posters this is uh, something about your home that is uh, even when you are grown up you remember the time when there were posters in your house on the uh, maybe in the wall if you have if your parents have that habit of having the posters or even something that was there in your house mm. you just speak about that with a, a lot of uh, love and a lot of uh, vehemence because uh, these are things which were there in your growing up stage and it also brings in a homely atmosphere a love for the home and the hearth this is exactly what achebe is also doing here he is speaking about the village of ogidi he is speaking about the school in the village and also the nofa uh, festival all these reminds him about the uh, things uh, that are connected to his uh, igbo tribe and in a way it is the major holiday of the traditional year and there will be masquerades and um, all kinds of um, masquerades and in a way there will be um for eight whole days there will be all these masquerades and uh, festivities going on and naturally this is um uh, uh, in a way counting the blessings of that uh, year for them and then you will find that uh, even if you saw the masquerade for uh, maybe 10 times uh, you only counted it only once that kind of feeling was also there and of course there is the sound there are the sounds of the village so here you find achebe remembering his younger days and it is not exactly uh, about uh, igbo alone he speaks about the english culture 
or the culture that came to him through colonization and he is uh, using that in order to uh, to speak about his memories or memories about his earlier days as you all know as i have mentioned earlier this is not a prose lesson but more like a speech and he is remembering his younger days and how he came to the language english and how he came to write in english and uh, how this language in a way um, helped him to speak about his igbo culture in this is in a way the best thing that can ever happen to a person from a colonized land and even in india also we have a lot of writers writing in english because they could uh, do that they could speak and write english because of colonization but at the same time we are never grateful to them for the way they try to uh, overpower us and make us victims that is not just the done thing but there are a lot of good points and those points are to be regarded in its right perspective this is what achebe is doing so here you find the uh, collection of from uh, achebe's memories and that collection includes a lot of memories not just memories alone incidents and uh, uh home life and also life in the school and also the festivals and these festivals are that which gave color to his memories we'll continue again in the next class uh, more about the uh, important festivals anniversaries that they used to celebrate and how they uh had a university uh, and uh, the upgrading of a higher secondary school to a university a uh, higher secondary school and then a university all these were quite useful for his education and he comes under the label a british protected child so that label will always be there and so as a british protected child uh, he is recounting the incidents that happened to him and uh, that happened in his life and also how the culture of uh, his own land his own people contributed to the shaping of the present uh, achebe and uh, it is interesting to note how the man came up in the world all by uh, the culture uh, not just of the igbo but also of the colonizer so see you again in the next class thank you